Hello, this is Elizabeth Perez Geiner, and this is my final project presentation for the Contrastive Stylistics class with Professor Elizabeth Lowe. The title of my project is The New Kleptocratic and Cacocratic Order in Venezuela, a Contrastive Stylistic Study. The presentation will have an introduction, a justification, just one second, objectives, the objectives of this project, a text analysis, the research process involved, the conclusions, analysis of text one, seven reasons for describing Venezuela as a mafia state and text two, Venezuela, a populist legitimization strategy. I will also check on some terminology used on text one and on text two, and finally the sources. Why Venezuela? Why, why, why did I choose this subject field? Well, Venezuela, Venezuela has become one of the most frequent topics on any news cycle in Latin America, Europe, and the US. And not for the right reasons. The dramatic changes the South American country has experienced since 1999 with the administration of Hugo Chavez Frias, who passed away in 2013, and subsequently with his replacement, uh, Nicolas Maduro, have submerged the oil producing country into one of the deepest financial, social, and humanitarian crises the continent has ever seen. As the title of this presentation reveals, the state of affairs uh, in Venezuela in the 21st century has transformed the country into a, a kleptocracy and cacocracy. This comparative stylistic English into Spanish study of Venezuela's current situation is based on two text types, a journalistic one produced by the online publication Inside Crime based on Washington, D.C., titled Seven Reasons for Describing Venezuela as a Mafia State, and a scholarly article excerpt written by Honorata Masepus, Guter Venendal, Anthea um, McCarthy-Jones, and Juan Manuel Track Vasquez, titled Venezuela a Populist Legitimization Strategy. The scopus of both publications explain the origins of Venezuela's current political, social, and economic crisis according to their target audiences. The authors of both texts are successful in describing the country's affairs by situating the reader in the, current, in the context in which these uh, events occurred with a proper linguistic usage. According to the readership they, they serve, this analysis will show the challenges posed by each text and will explore the similarities and differences between both of them. So in order to understand why Venezuela is considered a kleptocracy at this point, we need to understand what a kleptocracy is. is uh, a government with corrupt leaders that use their power to exploit the people and natural resources of their own territory in order to extend their personal wealth and political powers. Typically, this system involves embellishment of funds at the expense of their wider of the wider population. So, a kleptocracy is a move is a government ruled by corrupt politicians who use their political power to receive kickbacks, bribes, and special favors at the expense of the most vulnerable population. Kleptocrats may use political leverage to pass laws that enrich them or their constituents, and they usually circumvent the rule of law. On the other hand, we have the combination that the authors of these articles um, 
are um, are telling us is the uh, is in regard to kakocracy or kakistocracy can be called in both ways. It's a system of government which is run by the worst people, the least qualified. The word was coined as early as the 17th century. It was also used by English author Thomas Lowe Peacock in 1829, but gained significant use in the first decades of the 21st century to criticize to criticize uh, populist governments emerging in different democracies around the world. So we have text one, uh, the journalistic investigative uh, text, Seven Reasons for Describing Venezuela as a Mafia State. This, um, this text <clears throat> presents a uh, dynamic graphics with an appealing diagrammable uh, characteristic of news articles. The authors are not specified, except that it appears as a conjoint effort of the investigative team of journalists in Venezuela. The style is direct and approachable, with the repetition of certain words throughout the text, which makes the reading easier for the reader. At the same time, that it avoids an overly formalistic style. The register of this text is formal, but not to the complex level shown in the scholarly type used in this comparative study. The, poor, the website InsideCrime.com also has other reports with the same theme and diagrammatic bullet type about various problematics the Latin America region faces. Therefore, this article in particular is part of the series that um, they have. For instance, there is one that says, for reasons why Peru became world's top cocaine producer, another one. Three reasons why Argentina has failed to bring down violence in Rosario. Another one. Ten reasons Bolivia is a potential heaven for organized crime. The amount of transposition, modulation, explicitation, gendering, and compensation necessary in this text in comparison to text 2 is less notorious due to the directness and simplicity in the use of the language. Unlike English and Spanish, the repetition of words is two or more consecutive in two or more consecutive paragraphs forces the writer or translator to find alternatives. Otherwise, it would give the impression of cacophony or lack of attention or simply literal translation. We have now some of the images, the pictures shown on the, on the news article. And here we have <clears throat> more infographic information. We can see here bullet points, um, icons used, um, some of the terms used because are so local that uh, they need a f they need further explanation. This is a uh, well done, and it's very attractive and colorful. It definitely attracts uh, the reader's attention. Text two. Well, text two is a comparative, uh, is the, the, the title is a comparative study of uh, legitimization strategies in hybrid regimes. And these are the four authors. This text, This text is um, just one second. I'm trying to get the um, okay, excellent. So 
this text is, um, as I said, is a, is a scholarly article, our article's absurd, uh, written by Honorata Masepus Wouter Venden, Venendal, I hope that I'm pronouncing them correctly, <laughs> and Thea McCarthy Jones in Juan Manuel Track Vasquez. Um, this article presents a higher registered language in comparison to the Inside Crime article. The syntactical sentence structure is more complex than the journalistic article, which require not only more research, use of dictionaries and online corpuses on my part to verify the frequency of use of uh, some terminology, but also more editing and proofreading. The consultation of legal and commercial dictionar dictionaries was necessary to complete the translation. Additionally, a consultant professor in Venezuela, Professor Elizabeth Hashlam, uh, provided her feedback not only as a cultivated reader but also as a college research methodology process professor. Besides Professor Haslam's uh, consultation, I requested a former journalist, um, a colleague of mine, uh, from Venezuela, Iraxis Bello, who is residing right now in Spain, to read the final Spanish version and provide her input from the journalistic perspective. And finally, I consulted um, a former NYU student, uh, Natalie, Natalie Alvarez, who works as a translator and interpreter in the state of New Jersey. Uh, she was in charge of providing her observations of the overall translation, having, having two mono, monolingual li, and one bilingual readers uh, intended to capture odd syntax, uh, odd, the struct, uh, odd uh, terminology, structures, so, but most importantly, what I really wanted to do was to make sure that the translation sounded natural, that it didn't give the impression that it was indeed a translation. And that's uh, the, the ideal uh, result that all of us want to accomplish as um, uh, Vasquez Ayora um, points out, um, let me <clears throat> get the exact words uh, that I really liked uh, what he said. Uh, he said, give the reader the impression he is not reading a translation, even though he knows that is a translation. If the oblique techniques have been properly applied, then the delivery of the message in the target language will have been successful using the most natural equivalent and the, uh, in our source uh, language. According to the Circle of Praga, cited in Vasquez, Vasquez Ayora uh, book called Introducción a la Traductología. Okay, moving on. We have... Um, here are some of the features of uh, the scholarly article. Uh, when, when we click on some of the, um, the, the author's names, he offers us uh, some, a mini bio. Uh, at least uh, it, it gives us, it gives us uh, the idea of who they are and where they are located. And I believe that is a very nice feature. He also, I uh, want to mention that um, even though this article is not uh, colorful and doesn't have the graphics the journalistic article has, it certainly presents um, very good uh, features for uh, researchers and students, whoever uh, has ac ac access to this uh, publication is very well organized as well. Some of the, ter the terminology used on text one are cacocracy, which uh, we saw uh, um, in the beginning of the presentation, drug trafficking, 
foreign trade and investment, hard data, kleptocracy, mafia state, mega bandas, PDVSA, penitentiary, penitentiary system, Sabine, the collectives, think tank, the cartel of the sons, the prints or prans, um, in Venezuelan underworld. Now let's see some of the terminology used on text two. Agreement of Punto Fijo, which is Pacto de Punto Fijo. Bolivarianism, referring to Simon Bolivar. That analysis, this is the name of a company in Venezuela. A research company, a market research company. So there is uh, anything to, to really do here, but uh, just um, repeating and, and, and preserving the name. Equated, the liberator, which is a libertador, is referring to Simon Bolivar indistinctively. Follow range, golpe de estado, which we use in English the French uh, term, coup d'etat. Um, Hiographic input legitimacy, national assembly, outwards, output legitimacy, tertiary education, participatory, patronage, and sprawling crowds. Then we have here the sources. And finally, we have the conclusions. Well, reading and researching about Venezuela's current situation is never easy as being a native of Venezuela and living outside for a long time. However, being far away has its advantages because it provides me with a more neutral perspective. Having been not so long ago and still meaningful journalistic work experience I had in Venezuela is another reason why I gravitate towards these topics. And by doing so, I have been, consciously or not, finding that the translation of news articles and mass media portals is an area that I would be interested in for future assignments. I was satisfied by the level of information and the research process behind both uh, publications. Their arguments were solid and well-researched, which made the translation process more pleasant. The visual presentation in text one, the journalistic article, was colorful and with inclusion of graphics, comparative charts, colored titles with bigger and bold fonts. The spacing also played uh, an important uh, role in the perception of the work. Additionally, this article was displayed on the Inside Crimes website, while text 2 was uh, found in academic uh, websites uh, such as Taylor uh, Francis website, um, which is a research journal directed uh, to scholars and professionals in all areas of humanities, social sciences, behavioral sciences, etc. The scholarly article, unlike the journalistic one, did not have graphics, photographs, or charts. However, the display of, of articles uh, on that website was uh, user-friendly and provided all the options for citation, printing options, access, and links through official institutions such as universities, research centers, among others. There is also a disclosure of a statistics that is useful for researchers for future comparisons. For example, metrics, how many people have seen the article, how many times has been cited, etc. The only option I was unable to find was other languages besides English. 
unlike tex one the inside crime website had an, the option to switch it to spanish i didn't see more languages but i saw spanish moreover on tex two authors were displayed in properly named with a brief description of their credentials conversely tex one was difficult to determined who the authors were because it was published as a team investigative effort. I would attempt to say that this is due to safety reasons. The level of insecurity, government control, and press censorship in Venezuela nowadays may be the reason for the publication to not uh, specify the author's uh, names. Both texts were rich in terminology that allowed me to work on the use of translation techniques which was overall an enriching learning experience that helped me to start thinking of the master capstone more seriously those these text types um, could properly be candidates for my final thesis this concludes the presentation thank you for watching goodbye